Hello again, Konius here. Tonight I'm flying from the San Diego International Airport to the Imperial County Airport in Imperial, California. I can see a beautiful full orange moon off in the distance. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'll take the parking brake off and we'll start heading down the runway. Looks like I can see downtown San Diego over there on the right. Oh, look at that. Another airplane. Okay. Well, we can share. Alright, plane's already kind of taken off on its own. So let's get up here. Get some altitude. I tended to put the flaps up a little early, so I'm going to hold off just a little bit, get a little bit more altitude before I make that change. Let's see if it goes smoother. Uh, looks like I'm overdoing it on the throttle. Alright, I feel like now would be a good time to bring the flaps up. And pull back on the stick. Compensate. Now we'll be able to gain some altitude. Let me get us on course. Clear to land, runway nine southwest, one four three five. I wonder if we can see the moon if I look out the window. I don't think so. Well, we'll check that out when I go outside. I set a flight level of three thousand. I'm going to hand off southwest to the autopilot. Momentarily, once so I get us kind of back on course. All right, well that seems pretty close. Make sure I still have nav mode on. I do. Okay, let's go to autopilot. Let it take over. doing a little bit more of a radical and accurate change than I was doing. Oh wow, look at the moon, that's beautiful. Alright, I've had a problem before with the autopilot doing a serpentine thing. Uh, want to hand off to it, and so I'm hoping that doesn't Lindbergh happen Tower, too KH much here. I'm going to be able to head it off by giving it some so rudder. Cal approach KH271 is type out. Cessna Caravan, 3 miles east of Lindbergh, 2,700 feet. get out of probably to kick off automatically, to Bravo but airspace. that might have helped. KH271, SoCal approach. Alright, so we're sort of reaching the altitude I wanted to go to, so I'm going to pull off the throttle a little bit. And we'll just go into altitude hold mode, which is... Alright, so we're going to hold at 3,000 feet. I'm going to keep us a little on the slow side, because the sky looks so interesting. So, yeah, keep it around 100 to 110, something like that. Alright, so let's go ahead and go outside. Yeah, that's really pretty. I think I can zoom in on maybe one from the inside. Let's see. Unfortunately, with the drone, you can't zoom in, so um, I just haven't figured out how. Yeah, we're going a little faster than I was hoping, so let's drop it down. Otherwise, I would switch to the drone and get all the HUD off the screen, and we'd get a nice clean shot of the moon and the sky. Alright, I'm going to reset the view externally and then switch over to the Xbox controller. And here you have to do 
things were worse from what you're expecting. Make sure our speed is good, make sure our altitude is good, 3200, that's fine. Um, a lot of detail. So we're heading east from San Diego, in the direction of Arizona, stopping in Imperial County. I almost flew all the way to Yuma, but um, it seemed like an, an awfully long flight. I'd like to keep these flights to, I don't know, half an hour or so, something like that. That's a little better to make a video out of. So let's continue to look around a little bit. Kind of see all the colors of the rainbow, at least the upper end of the rainbow there over in the sky. I guess that's the opposite end of the rainbow there. So I'm going to go back to the default view for a bit. So this is the latest patch with the Japan update. I'm planning to do some sort of a Japan video, figure out what I'm going to do there. But it would be fun to explore some of the architecture. I've never been to Japan, I've never flown the simulator in Japan. There's supposed to be a bunch of updates to things, uh, bug fixes, fixes to avionics, fixes to autopilot, fixes to some of the airplanes. Including this one, the changes they mentioned didn't seem to affect anything that I take advantage of, so I don't think I'm affected by it. And this is the 208B Grand Caravan Tesla. It's been running fine. I switched to it from the 172. It's uh, kind of big but it feels nice, it flies nice. Um, I mean, I do plan to step up to larger aircraft, but this one feels... Um, I don't know how to describe it, like slightly bloated or something. Alright, I am going to switch to the drone, though, get some nice views uh, without the HUD. Okay, that's a pretty nice one. getting dark. I was trying to get a hand here before the sun went down, but then the patch uh, oops, pushed upon me, so I had to stop and deal with that. It just looks so realistic. Alright, I'm going to go back to the default drone view, which is the same as the default external view. Go back inside, it's a little quieter. Uh, that's not quite it. I'll just switch out of the drone and then go back inside. Yeah, it's a lot quieter in here. I don't know if I've been to Imperial County. I've probably driven through it or past it or something. Um, but I <coughs> don't really know anything about it. I have been in Arizona a couple of times. Go ahead and look outside the window a little bit here. So once you're inside, the controller works in the opposite way, so you got to keep kind of switching your orientation. Um, and then also you have to be careful not to touch the left stick because that changes uh, the elevators and the aileron. I don't know how to zoom in with the Xbox controller, but I am able to do it with the wheel on the mouse. So that looks like a truck stop or something. All 
I'm going to go back to the default inside view. These panels are a little bright, so I'm going to turn those down now that it's getting darker outside. We could use some illumination in general. Um, I did finally realize where all that stuff was, so I can turn on inside cabin lights so I can get out of the way of this inertial separator thing. Well, I'll just turn on the other one there, so it gets a little bit of inside light. And then turn the standbys down. Well, they should be up, actually, but avionics should need to be reduced quite a bit. Okay. All right, back to the default view. I don't think it's too bright in the cabin. You can see enough outside without any glare. Um, yeah, this dampener is in the way. I'm not sure what that's actually for. An inertial separator to bypass. I have no idea what that's for. Um, but like I said, it's blocking. Let's see if I can go down and attach, approach it from here. I think I can actually left flood. Yes, there we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. Back to the default view. Moon still looks really nice. On the rocks, I don't know what on the rocks is. I guess that's a airport. Okay, I see some mountains coming up. I feel like we might be okay, but I might want to consider going up in altitude. Let's go back inside and look at Garmin. It looks kind of close. Our horizon line is below the top of the mountains, and so I'm going to get us up to 5,000. So the little control. And then I've got to set for 115. 500. I guess I need to give it some throttle. It's going to be able to. that, although it's, let's see, okay, I think we're good, it's gonna, it's gonna find the right mix, um, actually, maybe, let's see, maybe we need to reduce the speed, that's the problem. Okay, after this update, the autopilot seems a little bit more wishy-washy. It, it used to be a little bit more dialed in. That might actually be realistic. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to assume it is. Um, yeah, maybe I've gone the wrong way and I actually need to go up. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, we've already reached our altitude. Okay. No, no, we haven't. Maybe you gave up. Alright, well now we've switched to altitude hold mode at 5,000. I guess we were before, but it was 500 off. according to these guys. I'm going to pull back on that. Um, that's showing me torque and internal temperature. So I'm kind of overdoing, overstressing the engine. I used to just ignore those until I figured out what they were for. It's probably better to pay attention to stuff like that. Um, now, I don't know if 5,000 is enough, so I'm going to go up some more. Let's go up to 6,000. I can't really see. Change 271, you're leaving my airspace. Radar service terminated. 
going a little fast. I'm going to slow down. Frequency change approved. Squawk 1200. Frequency change approved KH271. Los Angeles Center KH271 is type Cessna Caravan 6 miles east of 1 Charlie Alpha 6. Request flight following. Alright, so I was trying to achieve 148. I guess I need to do some more throttle to be able to get us climbing. Southwest 1551 traffic is 8 o'clock, 4 miles at 5,000 feet Cessna Caravan. Report them in sight. Squawk 3276 KH271. I meant to go back. Get an overview. Actually, I can go up. KH271 radar contact 8 miles east of 1 Charlie Alpha 6, 5,300 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 5. Copy KH271. So I feel like we're going to be okay altitude-wise, but I'm not 100% sure. I really can't tell, can't judge. Um, I feel like to be safe, I'm going to want to go up some more. on the flight level change. I'll just go ahead and watch myself. Can't really see very much. I go back to the default view. Southwest one five five so one contact we'll manage the altitude. Uh, I'll hit the altitude hold once it gets to somewhere I want it to be. I get confused sometimes with flight level change and whether I need to, Going to one, drop two, the four, throttle, three, increase five, the throttle. One, five, five, one. And I usually just kind of happen to get it right, but not this time. But I should be able to hit the altitude hold button and... Oh, some bumpy air. These mountains will right below us, I guess. Yeah. yeah, so I hit that, it'll uh, hold at whatever altitude we're at. And so I'll just go ahead and keep climbing. Safety margin. We're at 7100. I'm pretty sure we're perfectly cleared over these mountains. Maybe I'll just go ahead and set that now. Pull the throttle back because we're going to start gaining airspeed and let the plane take, take care of us from here. I'm going to go back outside and go to the drone.
line to the default view of the drone, back to the external view, and back to the side. Okay, here we are. still feel like these panels are a little on the bright side, uh, as is the cabin light, and so I'm going to... Okay, I'll turn the right side off, and then turn the avionics down a bit more. Okay, that should be better. So this would be a good time to open up a lunchbox and eat a sandwich, or read the news, or do something. Plane's flying itself. Not much else to do except enjoy the views. I see what looks like another aircraft up here. I did discover how to turn the cabin light on at the back. Actually, let me turn that on. some buttons over here. Let's see. So cabin is that one. And now if I let's see, go back to the default view, turn around, we'll be able to see back there. It's not much to see, but um, with the drone you can actually go inside, see what it looks like from any angle, as well as see the pilot and the co-pilot, which we don't see moment. The plane jumped because I hit the left stick. I have to remember not to use the left stick when I'm inside on the Xbox controller. This is kind of an interesting view with the three monitors and everything. Um, anyway, back to the default view. It's nice and quiet inside, but I want to go outside and look around a little bit more. As much as there isn't It's just kind of a empty-ish area out here. That makes sense. I guess this is the Imperial Valley. Not sure what freeway that is. Alright, well we're not too away too far away from the airport. We'll be there pretty soon. Um, I think I've cleared all these mountains and so I'm gonna go back inside and get ready to descend try to do flight level control again. And so rehearsing in my mind when you're dropping, you want to give it a speed. You can just use whatever speed you're currently going at to drop and then just lower the throttle, lower the thrust, and um, the plane will pick up the speed by uh, descending. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to want to be at 2,000 or so, uh, under 2,100. Okay, flight level, flight level change is on. And then we just let off the throttle. It, uh, it's going to try to make up to 138, I think. Yep, 138. So we'll let back on the throttle and it'll start dropping. It's almost like magic. Okay, the sluggish ex sluggishness I'm noticing with the autopilot, it does actually seem more realistic, and the reason I say that is it's using the trim control and Whenever I change trim, there's always a delay before it actually moves the flap, and so... Um, anyway, I think maybe Autopilot is just dealing with that same uh, mechanical delay. If so, then this would make sense, and it would, would be more realistic, I think. bumpy air as we go over these mountains. 
Let's see if I can see anything looking down. Probably not. Not really. I need like night vision or something. Let's go zoom in on the moon really quick. Let me see how far in I can zoom in. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting shot. was a little higher in the sky, I think we'd be able to see more. I know I've flown at night with a full moon, and you could see anything, you could see everything clearly. It was, it was you know, virtually no different than flying during the day. All right, well, we're <clears throat> well on our way down to 2100. Got a bit more to go. By the time we get down to 11 or 10 nautical miles from the airport, the co-pilot will come to Cape the Tower and get us set up to land. I'm going to look around a little bit more. up you can see faint glimmers of the Milky Way like right there. It's very faint. I kind of wonder if I go much higher in altitude or somewhere with super clear air whether that would be a lot brighter. It would be nice to see the be able to see the, the disc. Alright, back to the default. So then the tail end of the flight level change is that we'll lose the speed gain we got by descending and I'll have to give it some more throttle to keep up the same speed at the time it makes the switch over to level it off, which is about now. Alright, well that was one of my smoother transitions out of flight level change. Still a little unnerving to not be able to see very much, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. We'll get the landing pattern, and then once we get closer to the airport, we'll be able to see the ground just fine. I'm sure. All right, I'm going to start slowing down at this point because I often get to the point of landing and I'm going too fast. It would help if I burned off some speed earlier on. So maybe we'll go back down into the 120s. Alright, I think that's a good enough speed. Go a bit more. Uh, I noticed with this engine there's a delay between giving it the thrust command on the throttle and the engine actually picking up to that point. Um, it feels like a managed engine, maybe it's managing fuel economy or something. Or something. Um, but once you get used to that, that seems fine, it seems to be just fine. I don't know what city this is coming up ahead of us. It's not really a city, I guess it's just some kind of a facility, you know. <laughs> it looks like a prison, actually. I think we're flying over a prison. I'll do the usual overhead view once I get over there. We can 
see much yet, but we're about to be able to see what's down there. I'm guessing it's a prison. I don't actually see any guard towers, so I don't know, maybe that's not a very strange shaped building though. I don't know what those would be. Kilo in the Apop Lima traffic KH27111 miles west, 2100 feet inbound to land runway 8. Alright, I'm gonna start slowing way down. Actually, we're right here, so. Oh, okay. I'm going to unstick from my seat and put the flaps down. Take over from autopilot. Okay, so now I'm in control. And let's land this guy. So I have vowed to land from the cockpit from now on, so let me go inside. Otherwise it feels too much like a video game. Alright, I got the engine maxed out a little bit too much. Just got to balance engine speed, not stalling, it flaps, F effect of the flaps, not going too fast, getting into the pattern properly, and all that kind of stuff. But it gets easier each time. And I find it especially helpful to have both hands on the stick in situations like this where I need a little bit more precision and less, uh, you know, bad corrections, over corrections. But a uh, yoke would be even nicer, obviously. Alright, so we're going to a good Kilo speed. Lima, traffic, KH271 uh, is our final we were. That wants us to go slower, so let's uh, drop the flaps down some more. They may, I may already be, I think they're actually already all the way down, so that won't make a difference. I am going too fast, so let's uh, drop the throttle. Down under 75, I guess. Is that what it wants? Alright, let's try to get on course. Let's try to find a nice, clean descent thrust and everything. Not gonna get too fast. Gotta be under 75. Just to burn off some of my altitude. And we'll have time to slow down before actually landing. I can do a little bit of steering, burn off some of that forward momentum. And then just have to watch, make sure I don't get down into stall range on thrust. Might have to give it some more thrust. Alright, well this seems like a nice stable landing, the air is calm, 
I'm not getting a lot of bumpiness. It'll probably get a little bit bumpy when I get closer to the ground. One of the patch updates had to do with air effects near the ground, and so it might be a little different. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. But I'm just keeping an eagle eye on the airspeed to make sure that we don't stall, make sure we don't go too fast, make sure I don't gain too much altitude. Those flaps really want to lift the plane up into the air. I see here we're already going too fast, so let me pull up a little bit. A little bit of steering. There's really not much else I can do to slow down, except uh, try to put it off with some steering and just make sure I don't you know, give it too much thrust, but just enough to keep uh, up in the air. Alright, well so far this seems comfortable, um, still going a little fast. Not much I can do with the throttle. Dropped it a little bit. That's not a, much different than flying from outside, but it's intended for this use. So I'm gonna make sure I don't drop too quickly, and we want to just float down in a nice controlled fashion as long as possible, and drop at the last possible moment. That's going to allow us to avoid a, a bump and just come to a nice, safe, perfect stop. Okay, so that wasn't perfect, but way too slow. We've already landed. Alright, so I need to look for where to exit. Passed it already. Alright, I don't really see anything. Let me go outside and look around. Um, I mean, it seems like it did the right thing. It guided me to this runway. So, from here, I guess I need to turn around in the dirt and go back. So maybe I missed an exit up here. I see these blue lights. That might be where you're supposed to leave. And so I think when I kept going down the runway, maybe it thought I was doing a touch and go or something. All right, well, I'm gonna just turn here. I don't, can't really tell where I'm supposed to go. At some point after we get off, runway we should get contacted by traffic control. I'm 
Am I on another runway? No, I think this is a road. Uh, maybe I've got to contact them myself. Let's see. Okay. This is one of these automated is airports. To run okay, that makes sense. Alright, so I think this is another case of we just pull over and park wherever we want. Because I don't see anything official. This just seems to be one big piece of asphalt out here, but no other infrastructure. So I'm going to make a parking spot right over here. Set the parking brake. Shut the engine down. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.